Deep within the majestic mountains of northern Thailand lies a vast region of valleys and rivers where people from China, Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand have long lived at a religious crossroads in a fusion of cultures. Language and tradition define their world, a world bound to fear and superstition. The Bride, Breaking the Ties of Fear. The Bride first migrated to Northern Thailand from Laos in the late 1800s, when this region, known as Nan Province, was an independent dynasty. In 1931, Nan became part of the Kingdom of Thailand. Today, there are approximately 30,000 Bri living in Nan Province of Northern Thailand. As a result of the communist insurgency, the Thai government relocated many Bri villages to the lower valleys of Nan province. Here, community life continues to center around fieldwork. Traditionally, they are a rugged but shy people who lead a simple life of farming, hunting, and gathering. Erected on high posts above the ground, their simple homes allow for a space to keep domestic animals below. Pigs especially are highly valued and time is often spent cooking them a meal. The bride prefer to work in large groups with few role distinctions existing between men and women. The men hunt and are skillfully adept at making gunpowder and handcrafting crossbows and rifles. In years past, their main game was wild pig and deer. Today, squirrels, mice, bamboo rats, and fish are often the only available prey. While men hunt, women gather grasses for making brooms and thatched roofing panels for their homes. Particularly skilled at working with bamboo, the bri weave many things, from floor mats to cooking baskets. Tender bamboo shoots hidden beneath the forest floor are a favorite food of the bri, and are often served with lop, finely chopped raw meat mixed with a blend of spices. Cultivated on dry hillside fields, Sticky rice remains the main staple of the bri diet. It is sometimes mixed with coconut milk and beans and cooked in a bamboo tube for a sweet snack. Corn, cashews, and cotton are also grown as cash crops. The bri also have an extensive network of labor trading, working for one another without pay. In this highly agricultural society, there is great fear that if one does not trade labor, others will not help in times of need and will gossip about them. In the field, workers share a noon meal and chew fermented tea leaves mixed with salt to prevent headaches and sleepiness. Labor trading is also used for cutting lumber, firewood, and constructing new homes. Due to deforestation, the Thai government has banned the clearing of new land. As overworked fields become less productive, many young men are going to the cities to find work. This once self-sustaining people are slowly becoming more and more dependent on cash and the Thai economy. An elected headman for each Bri village relays government policies and provides a legal presence at weddings, funerals, and divorces. Family is the most important binding factor in the Bri social structure. Men are considered head of the family, but kinship is determined according to the mother's line. When a man marries, he lives with his in-laws and works for them. Traditionally, more rooms were added as each daughter was married, a practice still seen in a few Bri Mountain villages. Today, a married couple moves out of the mother's home after their first child is born and they've accumulated the materials to build their own home. The last daughter to be married remains to take care of her elderly parents and eventually will inherit her mother's home, spiritual responsibilities, and religious amulets. The Bri are animist living in bondage to spiritual forces, trapped by hundreds of years of religious tradition that instills great fear and controls every aspect of Bri life. And it's not just the fear of what you yourself might do. Um, you belong to a, a clan through your mother's line. If any other person in that clan uh, does something that would offend the spirits, 
it could come back on any person in the, in the clan. A tremendous stronghold of fear hovers over the Bri. During the Bri's unique 10-day week, each clan has different taboo days when the spirits forbid them to work in their own fields. For them, a broken taboo will anger the spirits, causing sickness or an untimely death. Once a rice field is planted, food and alcohol is placed as an offering to the spirits on an elevated platform. The Bri believe the spirits of the mountains require rice to be threshed by skillfully rolling and twisting the stalks on the ground with both feet. Different spirits, however, reside in the lower ranges. Here they are free to thresh their rice by hand. Threshed rice is then dedicated to the spirits. Secretly trained spirit doctors provide insight into the spirit world by conducting numerous ceremonies that ensure a bountiful crop, good health and protection. Sometimes, when we don't do something right or according to our taboos, we will become sick and not get better. We then do more ceremonies. If the spirits want a chicken, we give it to them. If we don't do the right things, we will die. Turning to the supernatural to bring hope into their lives, the bribe will often go into debt making repeated animal sacrifices. Bamboo stars, the claws of a hawk or cactus, are found about the entranceway of a bri home, field, or village in order to prevent restless, hungry spirits from entering. Tattoos, amulets, and strings worn around the neck and wrists are believed to give extra protection from the spirits, who are capable of stealing shamadal, the life-giving force that dwells within rice and people. In the case of sickness or injury, it is believed that a person's shamadal has been stolen by angry spirits. By chanting and blowing on the afflicted, a spirit doctor attempts to call back a person's shamadal. It is then symbolically locked into place with a string that is tied around the wrist of each person in the spirit clan. In an attempt to mainstream the Bri into Thai society, the Thai government is encouraging them to embrace Buddhism. All Bri children are required to attend government schools where Buddhist practices are deeply integrated into their daily routine. Buddhist temples have been built in most Bri villages, but the Bri have not embraced Buddhism. These temples stand as silent, empty buildings, a symbol of a religion that cannot offer them the hope and freedom they long for. The Bri remain captive to spiritual darkness and a life of fear. God, however, has not forgotten these precious people. Walking in obedience to God's call, a small number of Christians are reaching the Bri with the hope of Jesus Christ. We saw that Bri were enslaved by the Spirit, just like the Lawa had been. We wanted to come to try to serve the Lord among the Bri because we have a heart to love the Bri. We wanted to tell them the good news about God. We started to teach these people and they just started to open their hearts to the Lord. No one came and told them about that, about God, or about love or these good things. Despite the stronghold of fear that has hovered over this tribal people for centuries, there are a few Bri that have dared to break the ties that abound them and have entered a life of freedom and eternal hope. Before I came to know the Lord, I followed the customs and traditions of my parents. I learned how to put the right things in the ceremonial baskets. While going to school, I was learning about the world in science class. I thought, I really do wonder who made the world. I went to the Buddhist temple. I did not really know what to believe. I was confused all the time. That's the way it was until I came to the Lord. Now I have freedom from the spirits. May the Bri people understand that there is just one owner Lord who can help them, and that is God. The most fulfilling part of this ministry is looking at individual Bri believers whose lives have been really transformed by the gospel. One of the quickest transformations that takes place in their lives is 
they step right out of this cloud of fear that they've been living under and, and start living under the light. Despite this release from spiritual darkness and fear, the Bri believer faces much persecution and rejection from the vast majority who remain in bondage. This is what affects the Christians. If a Christian leaves the spirits and comes to faith in Christ, he's responsible to all the members of his clan. If any of them are sick, they said, look, you left the spirits, now we're sick. And uh, this is a heavy burden for the Christian. After more than 25 years of devoted efforts to reach the Bri, a small Christian church has been planted among them. Then right after I believed in God, I saw my life changing from the way it was, from my old life in which I used to fight with my family. Therefore, there was no warmth in my family. As soon as we believed, everything began improving. Thank God that He continued to lead me in my life. I was sick and wanting to get better. But in the process, I began to hear God's word and began to like it. I realized that God is the Lord of all. Then I began to see that I was a sinner. I was still sick and had problems as well. But I was hearing about God and really like it. I have been believing God's word for a long time now, and it is in my life. As I listen to God's word, I am convinced and one day when I die, I have eternal hope in God. There is still much work to be done. Continual prayer and watering is vital to the growth of this precious fellowship and the few missionaries who have dedicated their lives to reaching the Bri. Our greatest need is to have missionaries who are convinced that this is what God has for them and uh, whose churches are, are very much behind them, not, not only financially, but uh, seeking to have an encouraging ministry with them where they're really showing interest, really showing support, really showing that they believe that their missionaries are, are doing an important job. They're seeking to remain vitally involved in their lives and staying in contact with them, just really seeking to uh, help keep them encouraged. A church in the United States has become vitally involved in the work of reaching out to the Bri by adopting them as a people group they want to reach. Adoption of the Bri people has helped us to uh, understand the very specific and particular strategic role that God is, uh, has for us as a congregation. And that's very exciting. Generally, we know that God is using us to, to reach people for Jesus Christ, but to know that we are doing something very specific with a specific people group in a specific part of the world is a very exciting thing and helps us then uh, to really focus uh, our, uh, our energies uh, in what God's doing in the world. So what that has involved then is a um, growing in our knowledge of who this people group is, the characteristics uh, of these folks, the milieu in which they live, the culture in which they live, the country in which they live, uh, their religious practices and those kinds of things. Uh, so that we can, with in partnership with our missionaries, we can help them strategize for reaching the Pry people and, and ultimately building a church. You too can be a strategic part of reaching the Bri by having your church or fellowship adopt the Bri, by living among the Bri and helping disciple new believers, or by being involved in teaching new agricultural methods to enable them to utilize the little land they have, and by committing to pray regularly for the Bri and the missionaries living among them. This place will not be reached apart from prayer. The Lord has to break down the strongholds, but I think it's prayer that's gonna even help us to keep going. But I think it's the only thing that's gonna open the hearts and eyes of these people. Please, will you take a moment now to pray that young believers will become strong leaders and reach out to their own people with compassion and wisdom. For a completed translation of the New Testament and Old Testament portions in the Bri language and the development of discipleship materials, 
for the truth of God's word to break the ties of fear that bind the bride and free them to worship their creator and owner. For an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as the life-giving force that cannot be stolen or taken away. The vast majority of Bri continue to live in bondage to spiritual forces and their traditions of fear. Their only hope in breaking these ties of fear is to embrace the freedom that God, their creator and true owner, can give.